If the equation of a circle is written in standard form, you can easily find out what the center as well as the radius is just by this form here. So in this example, we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 36. Now, since there are no numbers being added or subtracted from the x and the y, then we know that the center is at the origin. So we know the center is at 0, 0. So I'll go ahead and graph that. It's also easy to find the radius just from right here. This represents r squared, so r squared is equal to 36. Now that doesn't mean that the radius is 36, that means the square of the radius is 36. So to find the radius, we just need to take the square root of that number, which is 6. So to graph it, all I need to do is from the center, go out 6 units, and I recommend going out in all four directions to make it a little easier to draw. There we go. So the thing to notice about the formula is that with, or with the standard form, is that within there we have subtractions within these parentheses. So if you have a subtraction here, that means that the h is going to just be positive 2. So my center is 2, but then this has a positive here, or a plus here, so that means instead of this being positive 3, it actually needs to be negative 3 because the formula requires there to be a negative here. So this would be negative 3, because if I put a negative 3 into this formula, I would get positive 3. Now the radius squared is equal to 9, therefore the radius is equal to the square root of 9, or 3. So all I need to do is go over to 2, negative 3, and then go out 3 units in all 4 directions. 1, 2, 3, and draw my little circle. So here we're going to be given a few properties of the circle and we're asked to find the equation for it. So remember the standard form for the equation looks like this. Okay. So here, since the center is at 0, 0, then I don't even need to worry about this h and k thing. It's just going to be x squared plus y squared. Now, it says the radius is the square root of 11, but the form, the equation, requires me to square the radius. So I'm not going to just write the square root of 11 here. I need to write the square root of 11 and then square it. So it's x squared plus y squared is equal to, these cancel out, 11. So we can do the same thing here. So we have x minus h, so here h is a negative 1, so it's going to be x plus 1 squared plus, and then y minus k, which is 3, so y minus 3, and then the radius squared, so 1 third squared. So we have x, oops, I dropped my little plus, my square there. So x plus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared. Now, when you square a fraction, you square the numerator and you square the denominator. So this last one is a little more complicated than just plugging the values in like we did with the last two, because it requires us to actually use some Pythagorean theorem. So the easiest way to kind of visualize this is to actually draw it. So we have a circle here. And let me do that better and put the center here. And it's at 0, 0. And it passes through the point square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So over here somewhere is that point, the square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So we have these axes that go straight through the center. Now remember the x and y values on a point tell us how far over and how far up we have to go to get to that point. So if we were to draw like a little triangle right here, we know because this is the x value that this 
is the square root of 2 over 2 distance across. And this, because this is the y value, is also the square root of 2 over 2 distance across. So to find the radius, which is the thing we need to really know, because we already know since it's passing through the point 0, 0, we already know it's going to look like this. But the problem is finding that radius, which would be right here. But to find that, all we need to do is use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to just redraw my little triangle so it's a little easier to look at. So we have the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2, and then r. So instead of using the letters a, b, and c, I'm going to use x, y, and r for my Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So x squared is this, is this one right here. It's the square root of 2 over 2. I need to square that. And then y squared, it would be the square root of 2 over 2 squared again. And r is the thing we're looking for. So when you square a fraction, you square the numerator and denominator. The square of this numerator, the square root of 2 squared is just 2. And the square of 2 is 4. Same here. It's going to be 2 over 4, r squared. So I can go ahead and simplify this now, or I could combine them and simplify them. But it's just 1 half plus 1 half, which is equal to r squared, or 1 is equal to r squared. And if I take the square root of both sides, then I'm just going to get the square root of 1 is r, or just 1 is equal to r. So the formula says to put r squared here, so it's just 1 squared, which I didn't really need to do because I could have just left it as 1. And that's it. To find the equation of this circle, I first need to find the center, which is right here. So that is at negative 1, 3. So since the formula is x minus h squared plus x, oops, excuse me, y minus k squared equals r squared. This is our h, this is our k, so we know that this would be x. Now since it's minus h and h is negative, that means it'll be x plus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared. Now the only other thing we need to do is find the radius, and we can easily find that by using the Pythagorean theorem and just drawing a little triangle here. Okay. So if I draw this little triangle, I know that this is 3 units and this is 1 unit. So I'm going to use, um, instead of a, b, and c, I'm going to use x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So x squared would be 1 squared plus y squared would be 3 squared equals r squared. So 1 squared, oops, excuse me, 1 plus 9 is equal to r squared, so 10 is equal to r squared. Now, we could go ahead and just say the square root of 10 is equal to r, but notice the formula is asking for r squared, so I could just go ahead and put 10 there, because we know what r squared is. Okay. Now the next one's a little easier because it's centered at the origin, so that means we know that it's going to look like x squared plus y squared, and there's not going to be any minus h or minus k in there. And the radius is also pretty easy to find. You can see the radius is just equal to 3. So this will be 3 squared. So x squared plus y squared equals 9. All right, and the last one. So first thing we need to do is find the center. So it's at negative 2, 2. So that means we have x, well, let me write this here, at negative 2, 2. So that's x plus 2 squared plus y minus 2 squared. Now we just need to find the radius. And we're going to use this point here. So you can see if we draw a little triangle here that this would be a 1 and this would be a 2. So we have 1 squared plus 2 squared is equal to our r squared 
So 1 plus 4 is equal to r squared, or 5 is equal to r squared. And the same um, thing applies here, where I could go ahead and say the square root of 5 is equal to r, but I really don't need to know r, I just need to know what r squared is, which is 5.